So back pain is just such a common thing um, and most of it is non-specific. However, up to 5% of chronic back pain is due to inflammatory causes and a smaller proportion of that is due to a disease called ankylosing spondylitis. There are ways to try to work out what back pain is inflammatory and which is mechanical. Often that depends on a very good history and a physical examination. So early on, inflammatory back pain can be quite hard to tell from mechanical back pain. Patients, when they present, can come in with quite non-specific symptoms at the start, but over time, they may become, uh, they may get features of disease which do sound inflammatory. These include an onset of disease at an early age. Uh, it may include having night pain, waking up with a lot of stiffness that can last for many hours. Typically, inflammatory back pain is actually better with activity. So these are patients who feel better when they move around, when they get up and have a shower, when they play sport. And then when they cool down for say, for example overnight, they then start getting the pain again. While ankylosing spondylitis is thought to be primarily a spinal disease, it affects much more. Uh, patients can often have peripheral joint disease. By that I mean joints such as the hips, the knees, wrists, shoulders being involved. Um, they also can have a systemic disease. Patients often feel unwell. They may have fatigue, um, they may uh, even have heart or lung involvement due to the disease. So it's much more than just a spinal disease. The typical patient with ankylosing spondylitis tends to be male, tends to be a young patient. It typically has an onset in the late teens or the early 20s. So a young male is a typical patient. However, it should be remembered that this disease also affects females so they should not be excluded from having this diagnosis. So trying to work out the different causes of back pain uh, is not easy. And when we see patients with back pain, what we're trying to determine is whether they have a degenerative or mechanical cause compared to an inflammatory cause. We've already mentioned some of the features of inflammatory back pain, so this is important to ask for. It's important to ask for clues which might help um, make the diagnosis more likely and, and then examine the patient. When you examine the patient with inflammatory back pain, often there's uh, irritation in the sacroiliac joints. You may even look for other clues such as uh, skin psoriasis or nail psoriasis. There is a strong component of genetics with a disease like ankylosing spondylitis. So there's a gene called the HLA-B27 that is uh, strongly associated with this condition. This actually means that a family history is quite important. You should always ask if a patient has relatives with ankylosing spondylitis. They may not know because it's, it's a disease where awareness is poor, but they may know about other family members who have psoriatic arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease such as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. So family history is definitely useful.